I'm Tom, welcome back to my channel, and today we're gonna show you how to care for a large collection of turtles and tortoises, starting with this eastern painted turtle, that's Seymour right there. Seymour looks to be good, healthy, UVB and everything is working. Uh, let's give Seymour a little bit of food. Uh, got some Zoomed Repta sticks, the gourmet, and everything looks good for Seymour for the day. Uh, we're not gonna do any water changes this weekend. I think everything's good there. Let's move to the tortoise room. Uh, the lettuce, looking great. Over here, we've got some projects I'm working on and the incubators, I checked those last night, so those should be good. You know, what I'm gonna do is basically create a jobs list for the day. I'm gonna look at all the animals and see what I need to do. I have the whole day we'll assess uh, and see what we need to do. So in here are the captive bred animals. Things are looking pretty dry. Oh, you can see that one didn't eat its food, but all the other animals ate food. So these guys will all need to be fed today and I need to make it rain in their enclosures. It's really, really dry there. Here I use tubs to raise up some young western hinchbacks in a closed chamber enclosure. I'm gonna check their substrate, maybe replace some of their substrate. All these guys today are going to get a bath and food. Up here, this is what I'm housing uh, a one-year-old homiana. let's, I'm sorry, three-year-old Holmes hinchback tortoise. Uh, that enclosure's gonna need some work. He's messed it up. Uh, that guy knocked over his enclosure. I really need to get a new UVB light for Shelmer. That Shelmer, there's Rocket. Rocket looks pretty good. He's got some water, but everybody will get food and water here. Um, down here is Leo, our box turtle. Uh, he needs food and water and a good cleanup. Here is Heidi. Uh, Heidi is the relatively new tortoise I have. Um, what she's still doing quite well but what I've noticed on her is that she is hasn't been eating great fresh water for her more food she did not eat the Missouri that I gave her last on Wednesday um, here we go here is Blondie's enclosure uh, every other week I flip the UVB from Blondie to Brownie. Um, so I'll do that now. Uh, looks good, very uh, dry water, so we need to fill our water up. Uh, get that old food container out of there, the plate, get some new food in there. And then let's go to Brownie. Brownie's looking good, she's heating up. She's got the UVB now. The plants look pretty good, things are starting to look dry. This girl, as you can see, is eating cuddle bones, so I need to make sure I palpate her to see if she has any eggs. And then fact, what is that? That's just a rock. So in here, we have little guy and rooster. Their light's off, let's turn it on. They need new water. They look good. Uh, and then in here we have Coco. Uh, you can see Coco just kind of hanging out, so she'll get food and water. Uh, and here we have Jet. Uh, Jet definitely needs some water. Jet's burying herself. It's been pretty dry in this enclosure. I need to get more moisture in there. And then in here we have Dusky. Dusky is by far um, my favorite, <laughs> most friendly wild caught homeana I have. Dusky's a male. Dusky's growing slowly, but surely, and hopefully Dusky and Jet will pair up. So, uh, food, water, and these guys need some spraying and water. So in here, this is where I keep two homianas. Those will get food and water today. Here's the group, the trio, that produce all the eggs. That's Lucy in the middle. Definitely need new water. They've totally messed it up. They'll get food. And then over here, also kind of looking dry, so Fred and Ethel there in the back, they're gonna get a complete soak. 
and yeah, they will be happier. Um, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna look at the Belliana. The Belliana right now is, is, this is the enclosure that I was keeping the Belliana. However, I'm moving it to a much more humid condition. Um, so it, right now it is living in this tub and so I need to soak the, that animal. Um, I've been putting the temperature up to like 80, but you know what? I think I need to dial that down after talking to Jeremy, maybe 75 each day. Okay, now I'm outside in the garage. I actually had two of the box turtles outside this week. You can catch a short showing that. Um, they have since buried down inside their hibernacula. So it was neat to have them outside. They got some water and then I brought them back in. A little bit about our garage. Um, it's big. <laughs> It's an awesome garage. It's a mess right now. Um, you know, if we decided to put up a wall right down the middle of the garage, we would have a whole two-story garage. And look at that. That is a heater. And right now, I'm keeping it. Uh, the temperature is set to like 40 degrees. So... Um, that is the space I have and you know do I dream of having a like a Galapagos tortoise on this side of the garage in the winter yes I do then we have this space this is the space that I thought I would be hibernating the turtles but as you can see it's uninsulated and it just got really cold really quickly I think that if I insulate this this could be a great hibernaculum but if I want to expand the number of tortoises that I work with, as you can see, I have a lot inside, so I'm going to need to have outside tortoises. I've got a lot of space in here in this climate controlled garage to potentially hibernate animals like Ibera Greeks and marginated tortoises and box turtles. So now let's go out into the backyard and check on everything out here. So what you can see here is our little pond. Brody bought this with his own money during the pandemic, I think it was 2020. We brought it here. This is where Seymour gets little visits. Guys, we would love a hookup from Aquascape. We would pay for the rocks. Um, over here is the outdoor turtle and tortoise area. So um, this is a temporary enclosure that I set up for a single Western Hinchback to come out and roam. And then this is the box turtle enclosure update. As you can see, I have some wood here. One of the things I would like to start on this weekend is building the lid for this enclosure. And so what I think I'm gonna do is build it out of these one by twos, put a rail of one by twos all the way around, then build a frame that sits inside those and then hinge the lid to these one by two frames. Let's take a little, a little bit more around the yard. Uh, especially if we're friends or you know if you have any ideas um, this is what we've got it's a long skinny wide backyard but it's not very deep um, this is very soft ground believe it or not a ton of water comes off this hill this is a little area that was all mulch I've thought that I can enclose this and it would be a fantastic box turtle enclosure or spotted turtle enclosure. I've created a little rain garden. Tons of water comes off that hill and goes right into there. And then finally, this is the outdoor Belliana enclosure. There's no Belliana in there. It's March. You can see it's right outside our window so I could be checking on those Bellianas all the time. And then we have this big side yard. So. That's about it. How you doing? Good. So we just did step one of how to take care of a large turtle and tortoise collection. 
on your day off, you have to go around and assess everything. Step two is to write the stuff down you need to do. What I like to do is split it into Saturday and Sunday. So for me on Saturdays, I have some regular care that I need to do and then I try to get some bonus things done. So let's start with the bonus things. This is going to be the weekend of build the box turtle enclosure. Those box turtles, they are going to be out of hibernation really soon and I want them to be outside and I want to be I want them to be outside year round and or, or I want to be I want them to be outside all day long to do that I need an enclosure we have tons and tons and tons of predators around here so that lid needs to be a thing so that is really going to be the focus of this weekend let's go back see more we didn't need to do anything see more is just basically food but tortoises all need food and water. So water equals rain and water dishes. Special things, palpate females. Look for eggs. We're in the middle of breeding season. I've got 13 eggs in, in the incubator. Three out of the four reproductive females that I have have laid one clutch. They should start laying their second clutch and then Brownie, who hasn't laid her first clutch, she should be laying a first clutch very soon. Bottom line, the box turtle enclosure lid, it's nice and bright, it's sunny. I think I could really make a lot of progress on that. So, a couple things. Connexus Working Group shirt. Thank you, Jeremy and Tyler, for sending me this. Second, I want to talk about Brian Barczyk. If you haven't watched Brian Barczyk's last two videos, please go and do so. Brian is facing the biggest fight of his life. There are two people that got me off the couch and start vlogging on YouTube. One was Kenan Harkin. He was the first. Then I found Brian Barczyk. I love the Reptarium. We brought our kids there last spring. It was the funnest hour I've had with my family, really ever. It was great, it was fantastic, just wonderful. I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll show some pictures, but Brian is facing a huge battle right now. Go over to his channel, support him, shower him with love. I know that he's been co quite controversial. I came to Brian much later in life, I've only seen what he's done recently and it's really inspired me. So go support him.